Hi, what's up? Welcome back. So, when you think of the solar system, you probably think of something like this, or like this. But this drawing is very unhelpful because both sizes and distance here are wrong. So, it's not very easy to see how big the solar system really is. Now, I attempt to fix that today by giving you a true scale model of the solar system. Now, you've probably seen several people do this before, but you've never seen anything like mine. Maybe you have, I don't know. Okay, so the scale I'm going to be using for this project is 1 to 100 million, which would shrink the Earth down to this size which is um, 12 and a half centimeters or five inches in imperial units. Now the sun is, as you probably already know, a hundred times bigger than this. So in order to see the size of the sun, we have to go outside. So for, uh, for my model, the sun out here would be about 14 meters wide, which is far too large to model, but this house back here comes pretty close to that size, so we'll use this, so I'll use this to represent the sun in my model. Now, onwards to the first planet, Mercury. Okay guys, so this is a map of the orbits of the inner solar system, and I blurred out all the names so you can't see where I live, duh. Um, but here, this tiny dot here is the sun, and over here, this area right here is where I'm going to put Mercury. At over half a kilometer from our house, that is the sun, we reach the closest planet to the sun, Mercury. Now, Mercury is also the smallest planet in our solar system, and about one-third the size of Earth, and at this scale, about the size of a snooker ball. It's the most heavily cratered planet in our solar system, um, and it's often confused with the moon because they have a very similar appearance. It has a day side facing the sun that's incredibly hot, and it can reach up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and it has a night side facing away from the sun, which is incredibly cold, and can reach temperatures as low as negative 330 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and now onwards to the second planet from the sun, Venus. What's up, I'm back. Okay, so I already told you that these, that this area was where I put Mercury, but Venus is all the way up here. That is the area where I put Venus. I am currently standing in front of a Publix and about a kilometer away from Because here, um, it's extreme temperature and atmospheric pressure would rip you apart in seconds. Um, it's not the closest planet to the sun, but it is the hottest because it has an incredibly thick atmosphere made of mostly carbon dioxide, which traps in a lot of heat, and, and temperatures here can reach up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. But let's get all of but let's get away from all this extremeness and go to a, a better place to be. Our home planet, Earth. Hello. So I already told you that this was the area where I put Venus, but if you go up a little farther, this is the area where I put Earth, about one and a half kilometers away 
from the sun. That is the place where I put the earth. Okay, so okay, so there is quite a lot of a uh, little bit of rain happening currently, but that's actually appropriate because this planet Earth is famous for being the only planet with liquid water, and uh, Earth is the only planet with life because it has liquid water, and you're probably pretty familiar with this. Um, now, if you look up a picture of Earth and Moon, you'll probably see a picture where they're quite, quite close together, something like this. But actually, the Moon is a lot further away. It would be... Dang it, Earth! <laughs> Hi, I'm here again. Welcome back to the map. Um, now, as you'll remember, the Earth was right over here. And I'm actually not sure where I'm going to put Mars, but probably somewhere over here. That is where I'm going to put Mars. Welcome to Mars. Mars is about half the size of Earth, and at this scale, about the size of a tennis ball. It is the fourth planet from the sun, and um, it's famously nicknamed the Red Planet because iron oxide in its soil gives it a dull red color. A fun fact about Mars is it is in the habitable zone along with Earth, um, but since it is very dry, um, not a lot of life can exist there, if any. Um, Mars has two moons called Phobos and Deimos, but even at this scale, they're too small to see. But now we exit the habitable zone and enter the asteroid belt. I am currently standing in the center of the asteroid belt in this model, and uh, I am about to show you the size of the biggest asteroid at this scale, and you're thinking, you're probably thinking, wow, the biggest asteroid? It must be really huge, but it isn't. It's this. This is the largest asteroid. It isn't even an asteroid. It's a dwarf planet. This thing is called Ceres, and very tiny, little planet thing. Um, it was discovered by Giuseppe Piazzi in 1801, and they originally thought it was a new planet, but as they found more and more tiny objects like Ceres in the asteroid belt, they figured, wait, they these can't all be planets, so they reclassified them into another group called asteroids. But since Ceres was so much bigger and different from the others, in 2006, its status was changed again to a dwarf planet. But to get to the next planet, we have to go quite a lot farther away. So let's go there. <laughs> 